complete. Well, Nicola Sturgeon has been speaking out. She's on her farewell tour as the SNP leader, uh, who's outgoing, of course, and fallen on her sword uh, over, well, let's face it, for all intents and purposes, over the trans rights issue. Uh, her husband has also resigned, Peter Murrell, over the weekend uh, as chief executive of the party over queer question marks about the party membership and the running of this leadership election. It's also the small matter of £600,000 in campaign donations that have somehow disappeared. Uh, well, let's talk about all of that with Mark Devlin, who's the founder of The Majority. They are an organisation, they say, giving a voice to Scotland's anti-nationalist majority. Good morning to you. Good morning, Julia. Um, so, how, no, very how well, nice to talk to you. It's no doubt at all, actually, Mark. Again, we've seen the polls, haven't we, in recent weeks, showing that actually uh, that there was a majority always for staying as part of the union. 55-45 was the decision in 2014 by the Scottish electorate. Uh, it's now gone down to, I think, 39% in favour of, uh, of independence. And indeed, not all of those people are even wanting to have a referendum in the next few years, the polling would show. Um, what do you make of Nicola Sturgeon's farewell, her departure from office, and the, let's face it, meltdown and chaos of the party since she announced her departure? Well, I think her, um, her farewell tour is just typical Nicola Sturgeon. It's all about her. Um, she's going around all these uh, stu uh, you know, TV studios in London saying how great she is. She's being well-received, of course, by the UK, uh, the London-based media, who always are fawning over her. But up yeah. here in Scotland, we are saying, what did she actually achieve in her tenure? And if you ask any nationalist, what they'll say is the first thing is they'll say, oh, she did the baby box. This is a big thing. And she was talking <laughs> about this on this Woman the other day. And I mean, really, she was in power for eight years. And that's all that they can say. And this was, and this was just copying a Scandinavian idea. And again, the idea that a okay, middle-class mum like me needs to be given a box of stuff, a, provide a cot and some basic stuff for my baby. What a waste of taxpayers' money. Help the mums who really need it. But this is the thing. When it comes to, you know, did you achieve independence? No, you no, did not. Uh, not. Did you, in terms of the things that the SNP has been in charge of, being the majority party in Scotland all these years, education and health, both in abject, yes, abject just, uh, condition uh, right of now. Of course, the big one is drug deaths. Uh, drug yeah. deaths in Scotland are the worst in Western Europe, and they've done nothing to improve that at all. I mean, people are basically dying on the streets, and they, they can't do anything about it, because, of course, their priority is always something else. Their priority is always Scottish independence. Now, even if you look at Kate Forbes as one of the candidates, she talks on and on about how she really wants to get rid of child poverty and so on, but if she had a choice between Scotland and going independent and saving a child and giving a child money, she would choose Scottish independence. Well, but I mean, we, 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 right, unless she actually said that, we don't know that is what she thinks. But at the end of the day, oh, there is okay. a big debate that's been going on about trans rights. She's in the interviews she's done so far in the speech she's done. She's standing by her view uh, on on the the rights of trans people to well people to to change their gender legally at the age of uh, of sixteen plus without uh, any medical intervention or surgery or any other safeguarding. Uh, she forced to back down over uh, trans rapists going into or men course, who were yes. rapists who are claiming to be trans. Uh, to hope to get into a softer prison. That's what was going on. Um, she um, she hasn't backed down on any of that, even though that, to all intents and purposes, was the straw that broke the camel's back uh, of her leadership. Uh, her, her sort of nom unofficial nominated successor, the continuity candidate, uh, Hamza Yusuf, he, he's still standing by that. We've got other leading candidate, Kate Forbes, uh, very much against that road. How do you think it's going to play out? And Do you think there will be talk about a rerun of this leadership election after all the shenanigans over the membership and, and basically lies being told about how many members the party had. Well, I don't think there'll be any rerun. I don't think that suits the candidates in any in any way. And they've all said that they they're going to be happy with the results as it as it stands. Um, I think inevitably the party is going to split. Uh, Hamza Yousaf is going to continue Sturgeon's legacy. He's going to fight the UK government over the trans rights uh, or gender reform bill uh, over the next year, yeah. and that's going to ensure bad headlines for them for a whole year. And a, on a policy that is very uh, unpopular with uh, yeah. most Scots. Yeah. And then and it, Kate Forbes, and I'm uh, sorry to just, I'll just finish the Kate Forbes, is, is she's going to split the party because she's basically what we call a tartan Tory, a tartan Tory. And um, she's she's almost uh, more of a Tory than the Scottish Conservatives. So, you know, if it wasn't for independence. Um, so, you know, anyone. Uh, there's so many people in the SNP who will just walk when she... Yeah, it's uh, going to be, it, it is going to be absolutely fascinating. We've got that result coming in and uh, uh, basically in one week's time, haven't we? Thank you so much for joining us, Mark Devlin. No doubt we'll talk to you about this again. He's the uh, founder of The Majority.